Thank you. We'd like to thank the Brain Foundation for their generous support of this research project in migraine. Migraine is not a trivial or inconsequential issue. Migraine is common. It affects 16% of the population, which is more common than diabetes and asthma combined. In the Global Burden of Disease Survey of 2013, migraine was ranked as the seventh uh, highest um, cause of disability worldwide. Migraine can be disabling. By definition, the headache associated with migraine is severe and is often associated with nausea and vomiting and sensitivity to light. In addition to the pain experienced by the migraineur, the disability from migraine stems from the loss of productivity, work absenteeism, long-term need for medications and recurrent visits to health professionals. Nearly 9% of patients with migraine are classified as chronic migraine experiencing headaches on 15 or more days per month. And these patients are ranked as having moderate to severe disability because of their migraine. Despite it being a common condition with high levels of morbidity, migraine is often overlooked as a health priority on the healthcare agenda. A recent study showed that less than 5% of patients with chronic migraine are able to access appropriate care and receive effective management. It might not be a terminal illness or a life-threatening illness, but the impact on quality of life is significant. If you're not a believer, then let me ask you, are you a taxpayer? Consider the health economics. It's estimated that the American economy last year lost more than $13 billion due to work absenteeism due to migraine alone. And that doesn't take into account the expense of healthcare visits and medications. Migraine can be difficult to treat. There is no one drug suits all. There is no consensus on the assessment of the condition and there's no test to aid the diagnosis or management. Our study focuses on patients with chronic migraine, these patients that experience 15 or more headache days per month. New and effective treatments are critically needed to help these people to arrest the headache cycle and make life more manageable. We aim to establish the effectiveness of a new treatment for chronic migraine and also to develop a tool to aid the diagnosis and management. We hypothesise that patients with chronic migraine have complex physiology and that the chronicity of the headache is perpetuated by sensitised neurally driven pathways. And we hypothesise that inpatient management with a subcutaneous infusion of lignocaine and ketamine lasting seven to ten days will provide adequate analgesia and stabilisation of these in entrenched pathways to enable us to break the cycle of pain. And we also aim to develop a clinical tool and hypothesise that nerve excitability studies will be able to detect changes in peripheral nerve in patients while they receive this infusion and may also document differences in nerve excitability before and after treatment. We anticipate that the project will provide pilot data to support the use of the subcutaneous infusion of lignocaine and ketamine in patients with chronic migraine, and this should translate into a statistically significant improvement in objective headache scores and translate to improved quality of life and improved productivity and also decrease the economic burden of disease.